parcels arrived from that Lewis Racing. It says fragile handle a car, so I will open it carefully. It is. I still don't know. As any regular viewers of this channel would know, the 180T in my MR2 made 540 Norse at two bar boots, two bars like 29 PSI. Um, and yeah, that, that's brilliant numbers, but the turbo can do a lot more. I mean, my turbo is a 58 mil, so not the biggest, but near enough. Um, Holsa HX40, it's realistically good for like 650 push. The dyno it made 514 on is a very unfriendly dyno compared to a lot of them. So on most dynos it'd be making like probably 550 odd, you know, seeing as the bullshit numbers a lot of them do. But either way, um, it's nowhere near the limit of the turbo. And that generally suggests at that kind of boost level that there's another restriction and to be honest i know there is basically uh i'm on a standard small port head and you know for, for over for well over 500 on a small port head is like shows how good the heads are and it's like unmodified small port head as well i haven't touched the ports um and everyone knows well it's not everyone knows but it's the general common thing above like maybe 450 a big port head is a big advantage um also my inlet manifold is probably restrictive at this level it's a standard throttle body it's um a wrc plenum which realistically was designed for like 300 horsepower <laughs> you know what i mean not really this badger 5 once upon a time tested one the same plenum as mine but with longer and thinner runners and they found it at like 400 horsepower to be more restrictive than the standard one. I think that was mostly the runners, but regardless, at the level I'm on, it's probably a restriction. Um, I don't think my exhaust manifold is, because it's got quite big runners. It's still, you know, it's still a cast one, it's nothing fancy, but it, that's probably okay. And the turbo, the turbine side of the turbo is okay. The compressor side of the turbo is it's getting there but i think it's good for probably another 100 horsepower more than it's pushing so yeah one thing the obvious thing is because it's known it's a fact it's not like not like i think like the inlet manifold the head the ports are restricted so i got this scrap head i had lying around that i've kept this is a head I don't even know where it come from. I can't remember. I think someone gave it me or I don't know. But it's got, um, it must have, cam belt must have broke or something. Because it's got a slightly bent valve. So I've literally kept it as a a test head. I haven't even kept the cam caps. I've thrown them away so I could never reuse it anyway. It looks a clean head apart from that. But, you know. And I got the die grinder out. And basically did a bit of porting to see, basically just to match it port match to the manifold sizes well the the gasket sizes which is the same as the manifold and um see the difference it can make and let me show you right this is the inlet side of things and well <laughs> it doesn't need any explanation really this is a standard big port gasket i whacked onto this small port head just to basically see the difference and yeah, I, you can tell which one I uh, modified. So yeah, as standard, the small port head, this is, this is how my 514 plus horsepower one is. So you've got the three valves and basically you've got the small port then it goes bigger to reach the valves either side. So you can see sort of half of each of the outside two valves are shrouded. Big port head. I mean, I could maybe go more than this as well, but this is literally just, you know, 
you've basically got a straight shot to all three valves. Let me, um, I mean, this is a very rough cut. I haven't like tried to smooth it. This is purely to get the shape. All right, so small port. There you go, small port. So you've got the center one has got a good shot, but the outer two, no, that's about half of it. I mean, you, the outer two, for example, you can't even really see the valve stems of the other two valves. Big port, however, is basically a, a straight shot all the way in. I've also modified, I don't know why, you, you can't really tell in the pictures, but I've modified it. The, because it's a, it's, a, it's a high port head, as in the, look at that, rather than straight out like most. This is, 180T heads are more like a race heads where it's a high port. So I've changed slightly the the way it flows, you know, as in the, the roof and the seat a bit, so it's a more even straighter shot than before. But yeah, the difference is fucking ridiculous. So yeah, that alone is good. But honestly, I think the exhaust side is maybe even bigger change. Exhaust ports on a turbo engine you don't have to go super big anyway, that's the thing. And these are relatively big as standard, you know, as exhaust ports go, they're not bad. They can definitely do big power, um, probably way more than my car's making. But flows flow and more the merrier. I mean, you don't want to go too big on an exhaust port or an inlet port than what you need for the power you're making. Like under, under at least... 400 you're probably losing out going small port to big port probably losing out below about 450 so yeah you're not really you know doing the right thing and exhaust ports are even more like it you go the bigger the exhaust port generally the slower the gas is means the slower the response and the lower the slower and worse the low down performance will be and unless you've got the flow of everything else to make the most of the increased flow at high RPM, you're just going to be losing it everywhere because engines are only as good as their biggest restriction. So if you haven't got a turbo or cams or manifolds or basically everything else that can make power where the head port could, it's not going to help you at all. All it's going to do is hinder you. But the way my car is where I'm making power up in like seven and a half thousand plus. I mean, my rev limit currently is eight eight thousand six hundred, um, and potentially that's going to be even more when I've got a better flowing head and manifold and blah 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 blah. I can make most of this. If you try doing this to a uh, same as putting big cams, do on any of that to like a smaller turbo car, you're basically just ruining your power band for nothing. Because this is definitely gonna move my power band up for sure but that's kind of what my car is but anyway again as you can probably see standard port size new port size let me put a gasket on and make it a bit more obvious so yeah that's the standard gasket and as you see i've not like hogged it right out there's still a little bit of room before the gasket but you know I don't, well, this is only a test and i don't really Care about going super ridiculously big. Let's shed a bit of light on things. There you go. So you can just about see both valve stems, but it's partially shrouding each of the, you know, the the separate ports to each valve. But going to this one, you can pretty much see the entire fucking thing. And this is uh, not at all complete this is just roughing it out to check and um, I'm pretty sure I can go more because I've not broken through or anything or even seemingly got close I've also changed the height of the top and the bottom of the port well as you can imagine because it's so much bigger all around but yeah you can see it's fucking night and day so yeah this would make a significant change I would say so yeah obviously this is just a test and my car so far has 
fucking brilliant, so I'm not gonna do it anytime soon, but if and when my car breaks, or in the meantime, while I've got time, if I build another, I don't know if I'm gonna build another engine for it, or another head for it, or what, because I'm gonna be, I wanna reuse almost all the parts from my car as long as they're not broken. Like, I'm still gonna stay with the bottom end as it is, standard pistons and everything. I just think, um, if the top end will flow more, I will make wildly more power at the same amount of boost, basically. So, yeah, bigger inlet, this head work, still the same cams, the NA cams. Uh, not sure an exhaust manifold. I think this, the current one would last me a lot longer, but Thomas thinks he should build me a big fancy one. Um, turbo wise, the current turbo will almost certainly do me at least, I don't know, it, it's probably good for at least 650. Or I could get it, um, well, not hybridized. Well, I suppose it's hybridized, hybridized, high flow, basically. So the same, the same HX40, it, look, it would look identical, but I can get it out to a 67, 67, where currently it's a 52, 64. So, it, you know, I can make it to a 900 plus capable turbo. But it's still T3 flange divided, and I think that's probably, well, I don't know when that's a restriction. It's definitely a restriction at about 700. I don't know exactly when it would truly become a restriction. But again, Thomas is trying to push me towards, um, like, and especially now I see these ports, a T4 twin scroll set rather than T3. Because... You know, I mean, that's some big motherfucking shit right there. And it almost seems, although I can get a big chunk of extra power, I'm pretty sure just by doing this and a decent inlet using my current turbo and my current manifold. And certainly if I use my current manifold and a high flowed version of my current turbo. But Thomas is like, well, why don't you just go one step up? And, uh, you know, with a twin scroll T4 setup on a manifold I make and do that. And it's like, well, yeah, I kind of see a point. Because I haven't got, like, a power goal in mind. But again, as Thomas rightly pointed out, I want more already. And when does that end? Because um, it handles the power so well, even though it's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Even though nothing of the same level of power or even way more gets even close to it i still want more and when does that when does that end when do you stop wanting more so and especially if this is done by extra flow rather than extra boost so you know it's not necessary well it's not really going to be any less reliable fucking hell it might be more reliable if i can make um at the well it would be more reliable at the same power level because say if suddenly I can make that same power at 1.5 bar rather than 2 bar or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, currently it's running 2.2 bar. And it's loving life. There's, there's no sign of debt, no nothing. But, yeah, imagine how much easier it can make it. So, yeah, I, I do think maybe when I get around to doing this properly for my own car, it will be a case of... Well, Thomas offered anyway, so it's his hard luck. He's busy, that's why I didn't want to... I don't like asking people to do stuff anyway. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to... I thought I'd just do stuff I can do, you know, bolt on upgrades. But Thomas is, in, you know, Thomas is like, wants to do a manifold. He thinks we should, so... Well, uh, it's on him, he said that. Now he can't fucking go back on it. I was, I was trying to save him a job, save him some work, but, you know. <laughs> if he insists... But yeah, I mean, the difference is fucking huge. And yeah, because the thing is, no matter what, um, no matter what it makes, it's 
pretty dominant for its level of power because these are light and aerodynamic. You know, race wars proved it again. Mine and Joe's, nothing come close. My car won my class by miles and would have won the class above, as in six to 700, if Joe wasn't in it in his, and he won it. He would have, he would have won, I think he would have won the class up on his as well. And I would have come second. I think he would have won seven to 800 and I would have been second in 7 to 800 if we was in that class. That's how dominant these are. Mine made 514. Joe's made, I think, 640. But yeah, maybe over the winter, I'm going to either... Well, I'm just going to get this ready. Maybe if mine blows up in the meantime, even more reason. But uh, now I've seen the difference supporting can make. And this is, you know, as you can tell, I've not done anything, no smoothing. I've literally been rinsing it with this big bath, you know, big bastard here. And uh, that's just a cutter. It's not a fucking smoother. I have to do the smoothing after. But it gives me an idea of the huge difference it can make. Because, yeah, I mean, like here, you can feel it's just a big corner in. This is practically a straight shot, if you know what I'm saying. So yeah, good times.